Dome. This is Dhamma Talk. Perhaps you saw the first video entitled Hasidus and Noahides. This is the second in the series and hopefully a continuing series to integrate the teachings of Hasidus as it should apply, hopefully, and will be accepted by the children of Noah, Bene Noach. Right now we're sitting in a specified structure which is actually a mitzvah, a commandment from the Torah. It's called the Sukkah. What is the source for this commandment or mitzvah that Bnei Yisrael has been commanded specifically? We turn to the book of Leviticus, Sefer Vayikra, as we say in Hebrew. And I'll read it in English and then in Hebrew. If you return to scriptures, chapter 23, verse 42 and 43, in Leviticus, the third book, the five books of Moses, the Chomash, it would say the following. You shall dwell in booths for a seven-day period. Every native in Israel shall dwell in booths, so that your generations will know that I caused the children of Israel to dwell in booths. When I took them from the land of Egypt, I am Hashem, your God. And in Hebrew it sounds like this. Basukot teshvu shivat yamim, kol ha'ezrach b'Yisrael yeshu basukot, leman yedu dorotehem, ki basukot, Hoshafti et Bnei Israel, Bahutsi Otam, Meeret Troyim, Ani Havaya Elokechem. Over three thousand years ago, blessed human souls, this commandment was given to Moshe, Moses, the mighty Levite prophet, in in that time by the Most High, in the Sinai Desert. To remind we of Israel that although we were taken up by the hand of the Almighty, Hashem, by day we were encompassed by clouds of glory and by night by pillars of fire. But at the same time too, every moment we felt our innate fragility. So 3,000 years later we dwell and conduct as much as possible our daily activities for a seven day period living, if we live in the land of Israel or say we live outside of Israel like as I do in Eirei Eitz, Crown Heights, Kesar Elyon. In these temporary structures, you can even hear the sound of this temporary structure. It's a wooden wall surrounded by mats of reeds. What is the teaching? What, is, what, what are we supposed to draw from this? Well, in the Hasidic teachings, the sukkah alludes to and instructs about the makifim of bina, encompassing levels of understanding. Now there's various levels of understanding just as there's various dimensions of these sukkah boards, these walls. There's the level that's at my feet, there's a the level at my midsection, the level of my heart, my head, and there's above my head. So it's incumbent upon me, once I become aware of the fact that the sukkah alludes to and instructs on encompassing understanding, am I willing to be satisfied with just a put level of encompassing understanding, or a midsection level, or a heart level, even a mind level, or am I willing to actually make the decision to actually see that which is above me and try to internalize it through meditation such as these. So you might ask a question, okay, that's great, B'nai Yisrael has this, the children of Israel, Jewish people have this mitzvah commandment to sit in the sukkah. What does it have to do with the children of Noah, B'nai Noah? I want to get a little tangential, but also getting to another point which is very important in this festival of Sukkot, the festival of our rejoicing for us and all the nations. That if you, the word Noah, Nun and Chet, if inverted becomes a Chet and a Nun, which in Hebrew forms the word Chain, which means grace. So anyone who is one of the children of Noah is actually one of the children of Chain, B'nai Chain. And once you realize that you're graced, you feel that you're blessed, you don't have time to get stressed or depressed. But that being said, there's another essential point, blessed human souls, that we find from the teaching from the Mitla Rebbe, the second Rebbe of Chabad, descendant, direct descendant of King David and Solomon, Concerning the Ark of Noah, the Teva of Noah, it is written that when Noah entered the Ark, 
it was an expression of inner understanding. Now we just moment moments ago mentioned encompassing understanding. But we want to take that encompassing understanding and put it into inner understanding. And not only that, blessed soul, something to take note of and help to internalize. Just as we internalize the food that, that we eat and the drinks that we drink, is that wild animals like bears and lions were not acting as predators as they normally do in their native state of environmental dwelling to consume other animals. No, they were content with straw and other whatever vegetation. Noah, Noah and his sons, three blessed sons, Shem, Japheth, and Ham provided for them. Why is that so? Because again, in that ark, which was an allusion to the temporary nature of this physical plane of life, there can be encompassing levels of understanding. But certainly this troubled world at this present time, 2008, Tavshin Memtet, five Tavshin Samarth, excuse me, 5,769 years since the original man and woman graced this earth, need to hold on to it. Because there was no war inside the ark. There was cooperation. Another important point, blessed human souls, is that the inner dimension of the ark, which was privy to the encompassing levels of understanding, was actually described by the Mitle Rebbe as Olam Hachirut, the world of freedom. So we see human, blessed human souls. The gathering inner understanding the teachings of Torah in general, and specifically in the wondrous and eternal world of Hasidus Chabad, which is an inheritance passed down to us from descendants, direct descendants of King David and Solomon, are keys to making this a better world through our meditations and encompassing those meditations through our garments of thought, speech, and action. And just concluding, once again, Sababa, rejoice, Bahav Echad, one love, Babori Echad. Because the good news is, the better times are coming, despite the fact that others don't want you to think that. Shalom, peace, hello, never goodbye, Lahamshik, to be continued.